Hello out there YouTubers, this is Sheriff Guy again. It's been about three years since I did my video on my gentleman study and as you can see quite a few things have changed in that period of time. Um, I've upgraded a lot of the furniture, still on a budget, not quite as tight of a budget, uh, but trying to improve things. And I would like to show you some of the changes and then also show you some things that have changed uh, with my collection. I'm going to do this video a little bit differently than I did the first one. Uh, the first one, I kind of went around and I pulled things down as I went. Um, it's a little time consuming to do that for you, the viewer. And also uh, the, with now most of my bookcases are, are glass bookcases, um, it, it's just kind of hard to do and hold the camera and, and all that. So what I'll do is the first part, I'll just kind of give you a general tour. And then the second part, I do have some, some items uh, that I either didn't cover the first time or that I've added to my collection that I'd like to show you and talk about. So this is the same space. I haven't painted. You see the, the wall colors are the same. But I have replaced almost all of the furniture. So uh, most of these are now real antique. So here in the corner, if I can get a wide enough shot, it's kind of hard with this swap to an iPhone. It doesn't seem to have as wide of an angle. Um, this really nice uh, glass store bookcase, I found this in an antique store uh, for about 300 bucks. Uh, it's a little more protective. It keeps the dust out um, and, and it looks nice. It fits the character of my books. And I will just kind of uh, go through this I guess an item at a time. Um, <clears throat> so the bookcase here, the top shelf is some of my more rare books. Actually, the very top is just some uh, some other collectibles um, and a few books as well. Um, you may remember my uh, set of Blackstone commentaries from the first video. Uh, I do still have those. They have moved here. Uh, and in addition to the commentaries, my wife bought me has a really nice gift uh, these these uh, bronze and marble bookends if I can get that turned around where you can see it it's uh, Lady Justice and I don't know that I'm able to take that hand on a sec here um, she bought that for me for our anniversary uh, not too long ago and I thought they were really nice um, I don't think they're antiques but they are actually bronze and uh, marble so they're really nice and of course the the black stones my 1771 black stones that you may remember from the first video um, a couple of items here uh, which uh, again i'm going to kind of show you separately when i'm done with the overall tour um, along with my black stones i actually have a copy of what's called uh, the comic black stone which was kind of a takeoff on those um, as an antique the next shelf down is uh, more uh, vintage volumes. And again, I'm gonna show you some of those in, in a minute. And I've got a really interesting uh, typewriter here. So I can get a little more light on it. So this is a uh, 1950s Remington noiseless typewriter. Um, I had this before, it was in a case, and now I've been able to put it out and display it. Uh, found this in an antique store, really interesting story. The guy who had it, his sister had been a writer and she had bought the typewriter uh, new and I've actually got the receipts and everything too. I'm, I'm going to try and pull those out and show them to you. Um, and very shortly after she bought it, she was tragically killed. She died in an in auto accident. So he wound up with her typewriter and stuck it in a closet for a number of years uh, where it remained. And then he finally uh, decided it was time for it to find a new home. So it has barely had any use. In fact, the ribbon in it was still functional, mostly, uh, despite the age. Now, the next shelf down, these are the uh, mostly the Barnes & Noble classics with a couple of other things thrown in. Now, someone had made the comment that I should uh, start collecting the Franklin Mint books, and, and I have a couple of those, and I agree they're probably higher quality, uh, but these are just easy to obtain. Uh, you get a gift card for a present or, you know, something like that. Um, and I like them. I like the looks of them. They, you know, they're not as collectible. Some of them are. I think I mentioned uh, the first go-around, the, uh, the Chronicles of Narnia there. 
uh, were out of print. I think they still are. To Kill a Mockingbird, they have reissued that with the same cover. Um, I haven't looked at the printing information on the inside of them to see if they've made any uh, distinction. Uh, but at any rate, I do still like them. I do like the Franklin Mint ones as well. I think those are, are great books, and, and you're right, they're probably a little higher quality. Uh, but I like these. Um, down here I have my Sherlock Holmes collection and some other mystery collection. Uh, I've got, you may see the, the Murder on the Orient Express there. That's actually a facsimile of the first edition. And I want to talk a little bit about first edition facsimiles uh, when I show you some, some items in the second part of this video. Um, I have a few uh, more modern novels. I've started collecting those a little bit more. Um, and then the bottom book is mostly things related to law. Now you may also remember uh, that I was a night law student as well as employed in law enforcement. Well, I have since finished law school and uh, passed the, the bar here in Georgia. So I am now uh, a lawyer. I'm still working in law enforcement. I've still got just a little bit longer until I can retire and then I'm going to go uh, practice law. So that's this bookcase. And then kind of going around the other way. Um, where my little leatherette chair and reading nook were, I now have an antique chair and uh, this nice rug. And oops, I'm gonna get rid of this bag before I get started because it doesn't really go. Um, but anyway, so picked this chair up on Craigslist for about 200 bucks. Like I said, my budget got a little bit bigger. Um, the rug, however, uh, was at the thrift store. I think I paid 10 bucks for it, five or 10 bucks. That's the same table. Um, I got this really kind of cool lamp that looks like stack books. That was another thrift store find uh, for about six bucks. One of the biggest additions is my new, well, old desk. So this is a uh, probably turn of the century uh, oak panel desk. A uh, guy had it in his attic, had been up there for quite some time, evidently. I'm going to turn this off because of the glare. And um, bought it for, bought it in an antique filing cabinet that you can't see because it's not in here uh, for 200 So, again, on a budget. Set of Barrister bookcases. Now, these bookcases, um, they are uh, antique. Uh, they're actually kind of cobbled together from two different sets. So the bottom two are from a company called Thomas. And Thomas, it's, it's a copy of the Globe Wernicke uh, bookcases. Uh, I'm suspecting they might even be interchangeable with them. I just don't have one of that style to try. Uh, but I picked that up uh, along with the one on top, which is a different company I didn't recognize and don't remember, uh, for 70 bucks. Uh, off of Craigslist. So the top one basically is just sitting on top of what was the top of the other bookcase. But it works and it doesn't look too bad. So in the other corner over here, I actually do have a Guetta Bernanke, but it is a more recent manufacturer. It's a different style. Um, this was a um, style generally made for government um, and it's it fits together differently. It's got like little metal nibs that fit in the top of each other uh, to stack. Um, I have a record player now. That was a Christmas gift. That's just a Crossley uh, executive record player. And then I have some of my uh, vintage record collection, which is mostly classical music because I once was a classical musician as well as a, a trumpet player in a former life. I still am, I still play trumpet. Um, Really like my painting. That's a uh, another thrift store find, 20 bucks uh, framed, really nice condition. Um, that's the USS Constitution and the HMS Java. That was a uh, battle from the uh, Revolutionary War. And uh, really, to me, really nice painting. The, the chair for my desk is not an antique. I actually did get the antique chair that went with the desk. But it was terribly uncomfortable. 
Uh, so this is a more modern chair that still looks antique-ish, uh, but is more comfortable for work because I do uh, do a good bit of work uh, sitting in here. I'm also, as a part-time job, an adjunct uh, professor at one of the local universities uh, teaching some, some uh, criminal justice stuff. And then finally, this wall is the uh, electric bookcase that you had seen before and some more books. I have books everywhere, it seems like. Um, the, uh, the Bible page uh, leaf, which I had shown on the, the first video, uh, is here also. And just a note about that, there's a lot of things that are here that I did cover in the first video, like the, uh, the, the sheriff's writ, uh, the old Bible concordance page. But I'm not going to go over those again in this video because you can watch the first video. Um, but I did want to show you my new study and how it looks. And then, like I said, I'm going to swap over and show you a few things that are new in, in my collection or you didn't see the first time. Okay, so I'm going to go, I'm going to stop here and then you should see the collection items uh, immediately after. Thanks. Hello, YouTubers. So I am now sitting uh, at my desk and I have uh, some assorted items I want to show you. And I realized when I watched uh, the first part of the video again, I referred to that as an electric bookcase. Obviously that is an electric fireplace. It's the same one from the first video uh, that I have books on. And I didn't mention this, but you might notice the floors. I refinished uh, the wood floors in here. There was carpet before. I pulled up all the carpet. This was the original hardwood floors and I sanded them uh, and stained them. I did it all myself. Uh, so the, the cost of doing that was very minimal. Uh, it cost me including renting the sander and buying the materials, maybe $150. Uh, but it just looks so much nicer uh, than the carpet. So to get started, a couple things. So I showed you the typewriter and I was going to show this to you just because I thought it was cool. So this is the uh, receipt and the original hanging tag from uh, that typewriter. So it's a, a Remington Model 7 typewriter, and you can see that the receipt is dated uh, March 6th of 1950, and this typewriter was a grand total of $76.50 from Mark's Appliance Company uh, on Greenwich Street in New York. So I thought that was really cool that the receipt and everything was still with it because uh, she had just purchased it. Um, and 76 bucks in, in 1950, that was a lot of money. You know, this was kind of the, I guess, the laptop computer of its era. Another thing that I wanted to show you, uh, you might have noticed it on the shelf. I didn't comment on it, and it around. but I have an old domino set. And this is, to me, just really interesting. So um, you see the, the dominoes in the wood box with the, with the sliding top. And the dominoes themselves are, um, I'm pretty sure that's bone. So they're bone on top and uh, actual ebony on the back. And they're, they're pinned together. These are probably uh, late 1800s, early 1900s. I don't know exactly the date. Uh, I picked these up in a uh, antique mall uh, for about 10 bucks. I mean, they were, I saw it, I saw the price and I'm like, that's just too cool not to have. Uh, at that price and this one uh, has a uh, name on the bottom uh, and I have no idea who that is I tried doing a little bit of research let's see if I get a little more light to it uh, but I really wasn't able to find anything most of the time I can find something but but in this case I, I didn't so but I thought that was really cool so moving to some of the more antiquarian books that I had that I showed you. Um, I mentioned the copy of the comic Blackstone and, and here it is. And uh, this was a parody of Blackstone's commentaries on the law. And there, it's actually quite funny. So it was published 1857 and it does, this one doesn't have a lot of illustrations. There's another really famous edition that does have a lot of illustrations in it. That's not this one. I'd like to find one of those one of these days. Um, but just had to have that to, to complement uh, my set of black stones. Now, also, one of the things you may have seen on the shelf, this is one of my favorite books, and I love it because of the binding, the way that it's made, and a little bit of the story of it. So 
This is called Bracebridge Hall, and you'll notice it says the author's name is Crayon. Well, there isn't someone by the name of Crayon, but if you look inside the book, it does have a book plate. Uh, again, I haven't done too well on finding anything about this particular person, but I love the book plate. I think book plates are really cool. And by Jeffrey Crayon. And you notice somebody's written in pencil, and I didn't do that. That way, when I got it, Washington Irvine. Well, Jeffrey Crayon was actually a pen name for Washington Irving. Uh, so uh, this is a, an early work by Washington Irving, printed under his pen name, uh, published in London in 1874. Well, one of the things I just love about this book is this binding. You see the, if you can, so I'm not sure how close I can get, but this attention to detail, um, you see the, the tool marks in the leather and, and the gold uh, gilding. Uh, of course, you've already seen the spine, but just the, the intricate gold gilding work on the spine, which uh, even goes to the, to the edges of the spine and that just beautiful marbled uh, age uh, page ends. So I just, uh, I really like this book, mainly because of the binding, uh, although I like the book itself too. So uh, a couple of antiquarian books. Uh, so another thing I want to show you, this is a more modern book. This is a textbook that you may have seen on the shelf. This one's important to me. It's an astronomy book. There's a place in Dahlonega, Georgia, uh, where it's an inn. The guy who runs it used to uh, own a rare bookshop. So he has books there you can buy too. And uh, I bought this while I was there with my wife. It's sentimental to me uh, and I just wanted to show it. It's not extremely old, um, I think. Uh, let's see if I can find the date in it. Um, Fifties, I think. Uh, no, a little older than that. So this is the third edition from 19. 38. But another interesting thing, I mentioned kind of owner. So you see the little Buffalo uh, College, um, you know, the, the sticker in it, and this book plate from John Eller. And I did a little bit of research, and uh, I found John Eller's obituary, and he was actually a, uh, uh, a geologist, I believe, yeah, and wrote some himself. So I thought this was very interesting. Uh, and it's sentimental to me because of how I got it. My wife bought it for me when we were up there, and I have a note in there uh, to commemorate that. Now, as I mentioned, I started collecting some more modern novels, and I'm going to start with just a couple of those. And I have this one. This is uh, Hemingway, The Old Man of the Sea. Now, this looks, at first glance, like first edition. It is not. I have seen this edition sold on eBay as a first edition. But it's pretty obvious that it's not because the advertising on the back is at this point it had already been uh, uh, put up for a Nobel Prize. So, I'm sorry, I'm sorry a um, yeah, Nobel Prize for Literature for 1954. So, it's still a really early edition and uh, you can see the, the, the price, uh, a 350 still stamped in the front and there's a, a note in the front uh, from 1962, so just I thought it was really cool, and, it, and it's well not a first edition; it is a pretty early edition. And I picked this up for next to nothing. I think I paid two dollars for this in uh, in a, uh, a thrift store, and certainly not worth what a first edition is, but worth more than two dollars. So I thought that was pretty cool. Um, I also another thing that my wife had bought for me is this copy. Of for Whom the Bell Tolls by Hemingway. And this likewise is not a first edition, but an, an early edition. Um, this also came from that place in Bologna. That's their, their bookmark. And For Whom the Bell Tolls was published in 1940, and this is a 1943 edition. But it has its original uh, book jacket. Now, if you collect books, especially more modern novels, the book jacket is really important. You probably already know that. But a lot of times, a lot of the value actually is in the book jacket, even more so than the book. And as an example, I have a really cool book I want to show you. 
this is an example of a couple of things that I want to kind of compare to that. Uh, up until about 1924, 1925, books didn't come with decorative book covers. What they came with instead was something like this. Now, this is a book on Brazilian literature. Um, I'm not uh, particularly a fan of Brazilian literature. I don't have anything against it either. I just, uh, it's, it's kind of uh, a non-issue for me. But I bought this because of the jacket. So you see the jacket on this. This, this book's from 1922. And on the back, they list the other books. And that's exactly what a jacket was in those days. The publisher would put advertising for their other books on it. Uh, in this case, they put some description of the book that it's on. And the idea was this would protect the book while it was in the bookstore. And the person, when they got home, you know, they were going to trash the, the, the cover. It was just packaging, just like what we would, uh, you know, you get buy something in a package now and you throw away the package. That's what book covers were prior uh, to about 1924, 1925. So this is a 1922 uh, copy of this. And you can see inside, uh, you can send to the publisher for a list of other books. And then on the uh, on the inside of the, the back of the dust jacket is a description of, of the book company and a place to uh, put your address and mail it back in to get on their mailing list. Most of these kind of book covers didn't survive. Uh, so to find one of these that did is, is kind of rare. So one other thing about this book that, that I found really interesting besides the book cover, the book cover was enough, but this book is printed as a quattro, and I'll explain what that means. But when you look at this, you see this first page here, and you see all the tears. Well, if you look, the first page and the next page are the same piece of paper folded together. And there's another example of this uh, in this book as well. Um, if I can find it. So bear with me momentarily. Look, this is it. Yeah, right here. So you can see where that is folded. And if you look at this next set, it's folded. And you say, how did that happen? Why is that? Well, the reason it's called a quattro is because they take one large piece of paper and four pages are printed on it in squares on each side. Then the paper is folded and folded again. So it's folded in four parts and then it's bound. And then they trim the book that's supposed to cut those folds. Well, this was a manufacturing error. They didn't cut all the folds. Uh, so you can still see the, the, the folds of the paper where the book's manufactured. So kind of just a neat uh, uh, representation of what book selling once was and, and what book manufacturing once was. So I think that's a, a, a pretty cool example. Um, I had mentioned also uh, in my tour about facsimile first editions. And I have two of those that we're going to look at. So you may have a book that you really like and that you would love to have a first edition of, but they're very, very expensive. There are companies out there that will produce uh, these facsimile first editions. Now, as a collectible, they're not that valuable, but as a reader, as someone who likes the books, they're, they're really neat to have. And I've, I've bought two of those at this point. And one of them is this uh, copy of The Hobbit. And I have, it comes in a, in a nice slip case, okay? And then you have the book with the uh, facsimile dust jacket, which is a uh, facsimile of the original dust jacket. And somewhere on here it does say facsimile, so people won't uh, use it to counterfeit. You know, I mentioned the, the value of the book jacket. But it's printed exactly um, like the first edition was. And the book itself is produced much as the first edition was. If you see a first edition of The Hobbit, that's very similar to what the cover looks like. I think the coloration is a little off, uh, but that's that's the idea. Uh, another kind of interesting thing about this, any, any Hobbit fans out there or any uh, Tolkien fans, you know, when, when he wrote The Hobbit, he hadn't written uh, The Lord of the Rings yet. That came later. So this, uh, this, this character of, of Smeagol and some of the events with him uh, that came about in the uh, Lord of the Rings, he went back and rewrote some portions of The Hobbit to match. Well, this being a facsimile of the first edition, this actually has the original text that doesn't have those changes, uh, which is kind of interesting. Then the next one I was going to show you is this uh, first edition uh, facsimile copy of Agatha Christie's uh, Murder on the Orient Express. And again, it's, it's got a facsimile of the original 
cover and uh, the original jacket and just just kind of a just kind of a neat book so i won't spend a lot of time on that but they're there um so the last thing i'm, I'm going to show you today is i want to show you uh, a couple of signed editions of things that i've added and the first is very unusual so this is a book you may have seen it on the shelf this is a originally went by called um, the Nazarene. It's by Shalom Ash. Shalom Ash was a uh, a Jewish author. Wrote on a lot of, of, uh, of issues. This one actually is a fiction book dealing with the, the life of Christ. Um, it was published. Let's see. I forget the date right off the top of my head. Um, it was published. Sorry, I'm having a hard time turning the pages. You see there's some water damage to this. Um, 1939. And this this is a first edition. Unfortunately, it, it has some water damage. Um, and that's the way I found it. Now, water damage can certainly uh, take quite a bit of value out of things. Uh, but this is unique. The um, I've seen many first editions of this, none of which are bound in leather. This one you see is. And this starts to make a little more sense when you look at the inside of it. So this has a personal inscription in it. It says to Mrs. Uh, Robert B. Church, in appreciation for understanding our common inheritance, Shalom Ash, Atlanta, 8th of December, 1948. So this is inscribed by the author to this person, uh, Mrs. Re Rebecca Church. So that's in itself pretty cool. So this is inscribed by the author to somebody. And as I continued to peruse this book, in the back of it, there's a copy of a newspaper article. Uh, and, and the gist of this article is about Mrs. Robert Church and how she would do readings uh, of this book uh, during Christmas uh, times. Uh, this was an AJC article this, this author uh, wrote in the in the 40s and, uh, and 50s, I believe. So just this really kind of cool personal story of what this book meant to this person and what they did. So it seems to me most likely uh, that Miss Robert Church had her first edition copy rebound in leather. So I think this is probably a, a, a one of a kind that she had done. I've never seen another one found like this. Uh, so unfortunately there is some water damage to it, but, but I think the inscription from the author and the, uh, um, you know, the information about her was just really fascinating. And then the last thing I'm going to show you, it's one of my most recent editions. I was so happy to find this, uh, as a, uh, person who just went to law school, one of my favorite books was To Kill a Mockingbird. Uh, I'm sure most of you have probably read it. Um, and this was a, um, uh, you know, one of the influences, at least, on me to want to go to law school. And this particular copy, this is not a, uh, a first edition by any stretch. This is a much later edition uh, that was printed uh, in 1993, I believe. Now, you can tell part of this by how the, the publisher, the original publisher, is listed a little different. Harper Ray, the original publisher, was a company called Lippincott, and they had been acquired by Harper Row about the time of this publication. So uh, one of the things I've kind of learned a little bit about and didn't know a lot about before. So on the copyright page, you have the copyright and you see all these numbers. Well, here they'd strike a number every time, uh, every year when they change the printing. So this has a 94, which means the number before it was 93. And this book was most likely printed uh, in 1993. So the best thing about this book though and the reason I bought it is the inside cover. So this is inscribed by Harper Lee. Harper Lee signatures, very hard to come by. Um, she didn't sign a lot of things. Now I mean you, you can find them uh, but they usually are, are fairly expensive. I found this book uh, at a bargain uh, but it's inscribed to Raymond Murray and I don't know anything about Raymond Murray. I'm working on that. See what I can find. Uh, with best wishes uh, Harper Lee. So uh, again, it's uh, uh, this particular volume, the, the original editions, uh, first editions were a different color 
uh, but this is a, uh, a letter printing, uh, but it bears her signature. So that's, if I had to guess, that's probably the most valuable, uh, financially valuable thing in my collection. So that's it uh, for this time. Thank you for joining me. Thank you for spending a little time with me. Actually, the collection part went a little longer than the whole video did the first time, I think, uh, or close to it. But I enjoy uh, spending time with you. I'm sorry I haven't done one of these in several years. I'm going to try and do a little better about that because I would like to do another one with some other things in the collection as well. Uh, thank you for all your comments. I was shocked when I first put the first video up. Um, I did not expect, uh, you know, a lot of, a lot of uh, responses pretty much for me because I wanted to. Uh, but I've gotten a lot of response and uh, I appreciate you all. And, and I thank you for your comments and uh, I don't see them a lot of times right when they're up there and I apologize for that. But when I do see them, I'll try and, and, and make a comment too. So thank you for your time. I hope you have a nice day. And if you're uh, into collecting books and having your own gentleman study, uh, I wish you the best. Keep your eyes open, peruse the thrift stores, and you never know, might bump into each other somewhere. So take care. Thanks.